Hey, travelers, welcome from the polar vortex in Wisconsin. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah, where you guys? You guys have not. This is your first time out today. Today yeah. it is. Yeah. Now, yeah. been out of the house in three days. I went wow. to the gym today. So. Well, thank you for coming out. Yeah. 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 I went to work. Oh. I had no choice. You had one of those jobs. That's yeah. Too bad. Yeah, one of them jobs where they like to make money and stuff. <laughs> My favorite meme of that was Farquad sitting on the wall. Some yeah. of you may die, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> Uh, if, if you don't know what the polar vortex is because you're watching in a warm area, screw you. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Though. But thank you for watching. And, uh, you should check out our video that we just posted on YouTube. It's the, uh, throwing beer, boiling beer in the, in the air and watch it evaporate into nothing. Yeah. Because that's, that's what you do in the Midwest, I guess, when it gets super cold. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it is painfully cold outside, like instant numbing of hands and face. Yeah, I believe with the wind chill today, it was fifty below. Yeah, yeah, less frostbite, less than five minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's real brisk. So, <laughs> yeah, brisk. Yes. Uh, anyway, so in because we had the polar vortex, I decided that we should uh, drink beers that are going to warm us. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I did warm them up a little bit. Not, I let them sit out, so uh, these aren't straight from the fridge. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Before we get to them, though, I want to I wanna talk about Hot Passport again, because that's what we do every week. Don't drink without your passport. Don't drink without your passport. And this week, we're going to talk about Lion's Tail in Nina, Wisconsin, a little bit. Uh, Troy, you know about them. And, of course, Andy knows about them, too, because Andy lives in Nina. Ugh, Andy. Yeah. Uh, I would say Lion's Tail... <laughs> My first experience going there was it's like an old building and like old style like bank or something and yep. it's multiple businesses in the building but it has you know uh, we don't get as much of that kind of architecture on this side of the state we're kind of a little bit you know newer I guess but you go to the the other side of the state they're a little older a bit more established you know city's been around for a long, longer so it's kind of an old <clears throat> old building nice old wood uh, stonework and uh, the guy that owns it I can't remember his first name I know his last name is like Wenzel. He's a super cool guy, makes a lot of fun beers, uh, a lot of hazies, big stouts, you know, kind of eclectic brewery. They also have, like, lagers and stuff. So. And we've had some of their beer uh, on the vlog before. Yep, and yep. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't picked up your Hot Passport, get the Wisconsin one. Don't drink without it. Lion's Tail, hotpassport.com. Use the promo code TAPROOMTRAVELERS for $5 off. Let's move on to the beers. Ah, yes. We're going to start real small because I... It's no, well, not real small, but it's <laughs> it's a three Floyd's beer because well, three Floyd's. Um, this one I don't think has a it has a name on it, but you know, like it's like Moloko, Moloko, Mo, Moloho. Three uh, Floyd's Mo is uh, is it's a fun brewery. I've stopped there a couple of times, and uh, I've stopped there pre and post uh, customer service, and because initially they didn't give a shit, so you <laughs> it was, you felt like you're imposing on them. I'm like, sorry guys, I didn't mean to come here. Uh, I mean, their beers are absolutely brilliant. Zombie Dust is one of the best. You know, the kind of the pale ale that kicked off the whole citrus ca right. uh, craze. But uh, you know, their 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 brew pub was like heavy metal, like that Batman and like horror movies playing, which was all up my alley. And that's where Todd the Axe Man is, right? Yep, that's the, where he the went. Surly from Surly. Brewer. Yeah, yep, the he's former the, uh, Surly Brewer. Yep, him and his uh, I believe girlfriend or whatever <laughs> went down there, and she kind of took over the tap room, and their customer service got way better. Yeah, like you don't feel like you're imposing <laughs> on them, uh, and you know that was kind of part of the charm too, though. Like it was kind of a place they didn't give a shit. So I mean, it's a different experience. I I would recommend it. Their food is amazing, and their their beer speaks for itself. But yeah, let's dive into this guy. So huh? this yeah, this is their milk stout. Um, obviously not. It's not something that's going to really warm you from the inside out, but it's it's a nice starter beer. Yeah. Well, when you're when you're cooped up for five days like Jake was, you gotta you gotta work into your beers every day. Yeah. You can't jump right with the heavy yeah. bourbon barrel aged stuff. I mixed in a Lineys yeah. Uh, yeah. earlier today, so I kind of I kind of oh, started go. slow to yeah. ease into tonight. But it smells nice and sweet on the nose. Yeah, and it's it's nice and sweet on the uh, the first pull. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that is so good. Just a solid still, milk, solid milk stout. You know that still got a little bite to it though, and you know it, it starts out nice and sweet and silky, and then kind of finishes out that roastier bitterness. Yeah, a little that yeah, malt bitter bitterness. in the end. Yeah, kind of has a lot of complexity in there, which is good. Sometimes the milk stout's gonna get painfully sweet. All that milk lactose in right. there, just right. unfermented sugars that keep it sweet. Uh, 
Yeah, I could yeah, drink. excellent beer. Even even the IPAs and and most people that watch the vlog know that I'm not an IPA guy, but I can appreciate what Three Floyds does with their IPAs. Oh, so good. They're well made beers. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. I I have gotten drunkish there multiple times because of that. Sure. Yeah. Pseudo <laughs> yeah. Sue. Uh, nope. That is Toplin Glass. That's Toplin Glass. Yeah, I like them too. Yeah. <laughs> also a good. <laughs> also an IPA. <laughs> right. Yeah, you got one part. Good job, right. Jake. You got it. <laughs> so I'm here. <laughs> Dynamite drop in money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm a huge milk stout fan. That's one of my favorite styles of beer, and I could easily just sit here and drink this the rest of the day. Well, that's it's one that goes down easily. Oh, so good. Uh, these next two are probably not you know beers that you're gonna have you know three glasses worth. Challenge um, accepted. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> This one is the Wee Heavy from Dangerous Man. I got this a year ago, so it's a 2017. Well, we're in 2019 now, so it's almost two years old. Oh, it's a Wee Heavy aged in rye whiskey and bourbon barrel. <laughs> so amazing, yeah. You're saying <laughs> I like, had this. You're just saying all sorts of words that I like, <laughs> especially when combined with one another. So I had this right away, and uh, it was it was a little hot. Yes, I will pour you some, Alex. <laughs> that's uh, that's the like we we always say this on the show: beer is best drank fresh, unless it's not. Right, and um, that's like one two percent of all beer made is probably meant to be aged. This is one of those two percent beers. You know, uh, we it was have... it was one, and if if you get any barrel aged beers, especially from Dangerous Man, I tend to always buy two at least and age one. Yeah. Um. The, the first one that you have will be fantastic, but it tends to be a little hot. And if you like the heat, that's, uh, you know. Yeah, and, I, have and that's, that's not to say that it was bad. Yeah. It, it was. It was fantastic. But it's one of those things Ooh. where. That maybe, is a complex, she's a little still, boozy on the nose. <laughs> that's a complex nose. <laughs> oh, boy. Almost smells like I'm smelling like a nice glass of scotch right now. Yeah. Yeah. Rye barrels, you said? Rye and whiskey barrel. <laughs> yeah. And you can even notice it's brown. Yeah, it's, so, not, a, it's not pitch black or anything. Right. So, uh, you know, we heavies don't tend to be dark. They're not like a stout anyway. No. But we, this... Naturally, we heavies, you know, I'm pretty sure we've gone over this, but just a quick breakdown. Yeah. Scottish ales can be two, one of two styles, a scotch or we heavy. Scotch ales tend to be more nutty and sweet. We heavies tend to be more of a Scottish beer where they have harder water, so they have boozier. Uh, that water kind of contributes to more minerally boozy beers. Yeah. And then they get taxed based on alcohol percentage in Scotland. So there's We Heavy 60s, 70s, and 80s, so on and so forth. And it's all based on a tax level. So they tend to be he- not like not not black like a stout, but darker ish, brown. Right, right. But they tend to be boozy. Scottish man. And this one is. This is no exception. 11.2. <laughs> Yeah, yeah oh, too. but there's not a whole lot of heat in there, though. That no, is and it, it's, it is mellowed oh. out. It is mellowed out quite a bit since I last had a glass of it. For how can... for how strong it is on the nose, it's not as boozy as I expected it to be when I actually tasted it. Get this, a little... this one when I first, so I bought the two bottles and then I sat in the tap room because they had it on tap. Yeah, and they gave you know they gave you about yay much in a in a similar glass to this. And I went, oh, I'm kind of getting cheated, you know, because they didn't, they didn't pour me a full pour. But as I was drinking it, I went, no, well, that's about that's, right. That's about good. What, yeah. I, what I would say is the most unique about this beer. So rye, um, so Scottish or scotch, te- scotch like the booze, like yep. whiskey, yep. tends to be smoky, whereas rye and bourbon tend to be more caramely. But we heavies, the beer, tend to be smokier. So the smokiness combined with the sweetness of the other one almost takes it tastes like scotch. Right. So Yeah. It's a weird in a in a couple of weeks, so yeah. if we if we you know go back and do another polar vor- vortex, we can do another episode. God, I, I have I have a stout that's aged in uh Lefroy barrels from Dangerous Man. Ooh. I'm gonna go ahead and say something right now. Yeah. I love Rob at yeah. Dangerous Man. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah. This it's is a great, a great beer. Best beer I've yeah. had in a long time. It's oh, a good, it's this a good is so beer. so good. And Sarah, for that matter. Mm. Sarah's a fantastic human as good well. Good people. Yeah. Good people that work at Dangerous Man all together. Yeah. I've never had a bad experience there. No. If, if you ever go to Dangerous Man, it isn't quite as cozy as you had <clears> hoped because <throat> it's just packed. 
that's not their fault that they make such good beer that literally right. everyone wants to be my there. recommendation would be Go to get there at noon right when they open right when the doors open yeah bring and a lunch it'll Go still early. be busy but <laughs> i mean well even if you're going on the weekend get there right right when they open you know at most there's going to be 15 20 people yeah but she feels still fast. still a nice still a nice time uh otherwise if you want to if you like the nightlife and you like to boogie um club dangerous for you <laughs> club, club DM, club dangerous for you because that, that place gets crazy oh, at night. Gets, so. place, I've been in there in like three in the afternoon. And it's just insanely yeah. busy. Yeah. But like they said, that's not. They just make such good beer that everyone wants to be there. And this right. is a testament to that because this is fantastic. Uh, right, and we also have uh, three bottles of the the peanut butter imperial. So oh, we'll, we'll break into that at some point, too. Landon, well, you might have the most extensive collection of Dangerous Man <laughs> of anyone in this city. Nay, Western Wisconsin. <clears throat> Which is that's, why I'm here so much. That's because I have a wife that is crazy about Dangerous Man. And yeah. She buys all their shirts and she hats. Likes and, she likes guys with beards, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish I was as cool as Rob, though. I'm, mm. I, I, don't, I can't do. even shine a light to him. Well, we all do. Yeah. Uh, People want to be like Mike. I want to be like <laughs> Rob. I want to be like Rob. You know, five foot two and big beard. Uh, and we have yeah. an episode at Dangerous Man out there. We haven't seen it yet. Yeah, that's a solid episode. You can, too. You can uh, arguably one of our best. You can Top five. find the uh, the story behind their name and their logo and all that stuff. So yeah. If you're that ever wondering, one of the funnest episodes to shoot too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We, had, we had so much good times there. Nope. <sighs> Hands down, one of the top five episode experiences that i've ever had yeah yeah same here yeah yeah we can do a vlog there we'd you have know, to do good we'd have to get there early because right i always won't have any room to put her stuff we could do it right during crazy time <laughs> uh i almost feel bad moving on because I've, I've had kbs before maybe we should have saved dangerous man for last oh but oh no no kbs this this one's been aged a little bit too I went I went this way because this is a darker barrel aged beer. Yeah. KBS stands for <clears throat> Kentucky Bourbon Stout. Bourbon Stout. Yep. Yeah. It is Founders Founders Brewing, another phenomenal brewery out of Michigan. It's kind of their uh their specialty bourbon barrel aged beer, you know. It's the Bourbon County to Goose Island KBS right. to these guys. They also do the CBS. Yeah. Canadian Breakfast uh, Stout. Breakfast Stout, yep. Personal favorite. I, I had some of that uh, in town the other day, believe it or not. Yeah. I found a place that had it on tap for six bucks a glass. Where was that? Where was that? That was at Betty's. Bug Eye. Really? Yeah, Bug Eye Betty's. Killing it. Mm. Right? Yeah. Good to know. Had a <laughs> had a good burger and so CBS. Me and Stephanie went to Founders Brewing in Michigan. Yep. My family's from Michigan. We didn't tell them we were coming because we avoided them. <laughs> <laughs> breweries. I went to breweries. <laughs> avoided the LaBear family, but... But that aside, uh, so we get there, we get there on like a Friday night. It's like, we're like, oh, let's just go to Founders, have a beer or two, then go find a hotel. And we roll in there. It gets a $10 cover for a rap band or Ooh, concert. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. that doesn't sound like something I'm interested <laughs> in at all. But so that kind of, at first I was like, what is this? And then we went back the next day and we had a phenomenal experience. Once again, it's a big brewery. So you wouldn't think it would have that cozy kind of like mom and pop brewery vibe. Right. Bartenders took super good care of us. We had a. Just a phenomenal experience there as well. Grand Rapids as a whole is a crazy fun town to drink in. If you ever just like, I want to go on a drinking vacation and walk around easily. Yeah. Grand Rapids, there's no hills and plenty of beer. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. You can easily do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we did. <laughs> so I guess a shout out to Grand Rapids for yeah. being awesome. Grand in Rapids. Michigan. Yeah. Visit Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bother visiting the LaBear family. <laughs> You know the UP's got some decent breweries in it too. Yeah, they're kind of yeah. they're kind of coming around down the pipe. You know, Michigan is uh, the essentially the the beer mecca of the Midwest. Yeah, like they have you know Dark Horse, uh, Founders, Bells, Jolly Pumpkin. Well, and if, you get, if you get tired of Michigan, you can go to Illinois. And, uh, Chicago's. I mean, exploding. Chicago's got a ton of them. And yeah, you get tired of that, you give up surrounding to Wisconsin suburbs. And, yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah. yeah, and the whole Midwest is coming, but Michigan kind of spearheaded the Midwest, uh, the beer explosion. So go Michigan, I guess. Yay, Michigan. Go Michigan. Wolverines. I knew that one. <laughs> yeah. Sports. Sports go sports, guys. Sports go sports. Athletics number one. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so this this one is a little more boozy on the yep. nose, and yep. obviously the flavor, a little more boozy too. A little bit. I also get a bit more chocolate in there. Yep. I think that's probably yeah. from the stout. Yep. What's the ABV in this, bud? 12, yeah, 12.3. 12.3. Yeah. So this is, this may sound bad, but I'm meaning it in the highest regards. This is essentially tastes like a solid stout with aged in bourbon barrels. It isn't necessarily flashy or overly complicated in any other way, shape, or form. But you have to remember this is one of those beers that kind of help change and define what a bourbon barrel aged stout should taste like. Right. So this is such a defining beer (coughs) that it's almost like baseline. Well, and it still it still has a lot of hype behind it too because you know oh, yeah. now that they started selling it in four packs, I love the four packs. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, they still sell the bombers, but I mean that bomber alone is twenty bucks. That was the best idea. Twenty one or twenty bucks. Brewery yeah. switching to four packs is you can drink one away, then you can do one every year, and you can do flights. And if you buy a four pack every year, you can start doing verticals. Yep. Yep. It is. That's a fun thing to do on a cold day like today. Is do a bunch of verticals. You know, if you got the money to do that, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or uh, yeah, foresight too. Yeah, you know, you know you, my you can't my go money back time and buy a four pack from four years. You ago. know, my money comes in spurts. So, so when I have time and I'm in the right place, I I buy the beer and yeah. and you're not a dangerous man buying it. No, yeah. Well, you know, you got to go to dangerous. You know, the only gripe that I'll have with dangerous man, mm. and not to say that they'll ever watch this, but if you know anybody there, all of their beer releases are on Thursdays at three now. Well, that's hard. Yeah, but yeah. they know they're going to get a ton of people anyway. And so. they do, and, and I mean, good for them. Yeah, I don't know if they're trying to keep those of us that live outside of the cities from getting any of the beer. Oh, or what? This is a pretty big conspiracy. I well, think right? they're throwing down right now. I, I I look at it the same way that I look at kind of the Brewers uh, Twin series, where they put a game on like a Tuesday through Thursday. They know they're gonna they're gonna sell out those games. So why put it on a weekend and waste so a weekend? So put it that, put it know, on a day where. Yeah, they you, they you need, could the, use they need more. the business anyway. Yeah. An yeah. easy sellout day. But you know what? It really chaps my ass. <laughs> so <laughs> Hey, you guys hear that? Win and ass is officially chapped. Yep. Brewers that's, my, twins, that's my only I mean, gripe. Yeah, that's my yeah, only gripe. It chaps my ass, too. Yep. Oh, I agree. Two chapped asses. I'd like to see Couple the brewers, ass. brewers and twins myself. <laughs> that's the name of your guys' future album, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's an indie album. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually going to get Greg Zappa to Greg, down. Yeah. <laughs> Frank was unavailable. Yeah. He's a little dead. Greg's kid, <clears throat> Bob, <laughs> Robert. Is it Greg now or Craig? <laughs> no, Greg's no. Zappa's kid, Robert. Greg, Greg, mm. uh, Bob. Yeah, yeah, Bobby Zapps. All right. Dweezil? <laughs> Dweezil. Actually. Or uh, Ahmet. Yeah. Whenever somebody... His daughter's name is Moon Unit. Whenever someone yeah. finds out that I don't know who Frank Zappa is, <laughs> the first thing they tell me is his kid's names. Yeah. Like, that's almost a part of introducing the guy. Right. right? For example, he's got kids with weird names. So let me tell you, though. <laughs> then they're, I was, just, they're just fun to say. Then I always just go, Michael Jackson named his kid Blanket. That's true. Yeah, that's At least weird. you know that. Yeah. Way to go, Troy. Cheers to me. Yeah. You know some <laughs> Michael Jackson stuff. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so that about wraps up our uh, Polar Vortex vlog episode. Stay out of it if you can, but if you're yeah. in it. Good Godspeed, and uh, yeah, we we pray for warm. all of those those of you in the east that'll be uh, experiencing this in a few days. Stay I'm gonna inside and drink. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and just go uh, give a tip of the hat to all the farmers out there. I used to I grew up on a dairy farm yeah. here yep. in Wisconsin, and I remember when school got canceled because it was too cold. I always used to cuss because I meant I had to go outside and work. I'm like I'd rather be in school. It's warm in there, <laughs> and then my dad's like, "Well, I guess you're not at school. You might as well go bed the pole barn." Yeah. So That's what you got to do. I hated days like this yep. when I was a kid. So God bless the farmers. High five to all the farmers out there. We got you in our thoughts. Anyway, if you haven't already checked us out on uh, Instagram, do that. Subscribe on uh, YouTube. It's down YouTube down below. There you go. Mm. There you go. <laughs> uh, make sure you comment and like this video, and then uh, find us on Facebook as well and Twitter if you really care to. Uh, Anyway, from all of us at Taproom Travelers and from those of us in the Polar Vortex, we'll see you next week. (laughs) Prost. Cheers. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.